nursing at the house. Were the kids all, uh, ever present? Always. They were always at the house. They didn't come to Staples. No, no, no. But were they present when Michael was rehearsing? Absolutely. What, Especially my kid. What was... What could you see or read in their eyes? I could see that they were learning a different day. That they were getting to experience a different day. Have they ever rehearsed with Michael? Well, he would... Or, you know, how kids are trying to copy yeah. or what daddy does, yeah. uh, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. No, it was, it was more or less like you could tell that they were learning. You could tell that they were soaking it up, you know. Um, for instance, you know, Prince was very into cameras, you know, and, and Michael would say that, you know, he's studying to be a director, you know. Um, so he would have his camera or he would tell me things about my camera and help me, you know what I mean, figure it out. Um, and, you know, Blanket, most of the times, was the one who was sitting in rehearsal, like just in the corner doing his thing, just watching his dad, you know. And, um, and Michael would talk to him. He would say, we're imagining, we're having ideas, we're brainstorming. That's what you do. You think of the idea, and then you make the idea come to fruition. So he was mentoring to him and teaching him and guiding him um, throughout that entire experience. And that's crazy. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I thought I turned it off. No, but but Blanket would be the one who every day he was sitting there. You know, he would sit in meetings that we're having about like you know boring adult production stuff, and he just sat there. And he was soaking it all up and just enjoying the moment, and Michael loved that he was able to sort of teach him that way. And then Paris, of course, she ran the house. She, you know, scheduled everything. She knew when lunch was. She knew what the lunch was going to be. She would figure out things. She, you know, she just was like the, um, she, was, she was the big sister. She was the, you know, the female energy in the house, uh, of course, uh, along with the, um, the tutor and the, and the chef, but she really sort of took that role, and um, you could see what they all contributed to their family unit, and it was beautiful, so beautiful to see. In your mind, was Michael a perfect daddy I, to his kids? I think that he was a perfect father to his kids, because how many children do you know who have such a famous father who, you know, commands so much attention everywhere he goes, but still could find that balance so that they had the normalcy that he could provide for them. You know, they did their school, I would see them, they do their exercises, and, you know, he had very definite sort of things that they had to do. They'd come in and want to watch, you know, movies, and he'd say, after you read a book, or, you know, um, you can Add watch the homework. Yeah, you can watch The Wiz after you come tell me what that book is you just read. Um, and so I saw that, and seeing him being able to pass on sort of those kind of morals and discipline to them was so wonderful. You know, we would have lunch together often when I was at the home rehearsing with them, and you know, just their graciousness and their manner, and we pray and made, you know, you know, thank God for their father and. You know, um, you know, ask God to protect all of the children in the world who don't have, you know, as much as they have. Like, they were really, really aware of all of this stuff. Um, and I'll never forget, one time I heard Paris um, say the prayer before our lunch, you know, and uh, Blanket was here, and Paris was there, and Michael was there, and I was here, and Prince was there, and she led the prayer. And it was just so beautiful to hear, out of her mouth, unprompted, you could tell it was something that she did all the time, and something that they were very aware of. Like, they're not these sort of rich, spoiled kids living in this big castle. Like, they're real kids who understand and... Morals. Absolutely. Yep. And know what's going on yep. in different I agree. parts of the world. I agree. It's wonderful. If I would ask you to describe Michael Jackson, what would go through your mind? Um, to describe Michael, I would, I would definitely start with um, singularly unique. The no, greatest of never all time. Never anybody, before any of that stuff, before any of his accolades and all of his career achievements and his artistic achievements, he's just a really great guy, you know? Um, there are not that many people ever that you meet who will just, oh, whenever you see them, no matter how many years go by, it's always the same, always consistent, loyal. I would say he was very loyal. I would say that he was very um, encouraging, you know? He 
always said he wanted to surround himself with the best people um, that he could find in whatever the area was and inspire them to be much greater. And he would always do that, you know, and um, just being around him was so uh, special and unlike anything I've ever experienced. So you were saying you guys rehearse new material? Yeah, absolutely. Is that something the fans can look forward in new DVD in the extra three hours, or do you know what is what will be on the new DVD? Well, yeah, I was involved. At, you know, as one of the producers of the movie, um, I was fortunate enough to be involved with the construction of the DVD, and a lot of the footage on the DVD is actually uh, captured by my camera. Okay. Because a lot of times, mine would be the only one in the room, whether or not it's Michael and I rehearsing or a conversation with Michael and Kenny and I. And, um, or a music note that Michael wants Michael Bearden to have, I would just record it. So I had a lot of um, footage that um, told a, another side of this, another layer of the story, um, which is present on the DVD. And yes, you get to see us, um, even more so than in the feature film, meetings, sitting, conversations, the sort of beginning of the rehearsal process, our first day of rehearsal, um, preparing for this is it um, you know Michael's philosophies on um, creation and you know creating his art and um, so you get to see uh, those type of things on the DVD and you'll definitely get to see us you know figuring out the new moves so what else is there now for Travis what else what is what are you working on now for yourself 